Thanks for staying with us. We now go to this devastating story. The Societies for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in Bloemfontein has condemned the treatment of lions that necessitated 30 being euthanized. The captive bred lions were found in a desolate state, starving and burnt following recent wildfires. For more now, we talk to Douglas Walliter, a manager at the National Council of the SPCA, indeed the senior inspector and manager of the NSPCA's Wildlife Protection Unit. Douglas, thank you so much for joining us. Now, wildfires have ravaged the free state and where there are fires, we know that there are normally animals in danger. Now, your unit came across a farm, Olivia, and they were immediately denied entry. And I'm sure in your experience you know that normally when that happens, that something is amiss. Tell us what happened next and what your team found there. Good evening, Marcel. Sorry, um, thanks for the opportunity, first of all. Um, but what we've got to make sure is that, well, clear, is that it was the Bloemfontein SPCA that came across the, the, the lines that were burnt on the farm. It wasn't the NSPCA. Um, however, sure. we were in close contact with the, with the society during their inspection. So um, we just don't need to make that clear. But I think anybody looking at those photographs that were put up on their Facebook, um, you, you can honestly sympathize with what the society went through, the inspectors, as well as the veterinarian that had to put down those 30 lions. Give us some of those details of, of what they found there. These are captive bred uh, uh, lions. What is meant by that and what state were they in within, where they were found? Well, captive bred, uh, it, it's basically the lion farming industry. So it, it sort of it started as a spin-off from the canned hunting and um, grew because of the lion bone industry, um, which was a replacement, seen as a replacement for tiger bone. Um, in the Far East markets. So a big market, you can use the lions for hunting and, and then you can use them for their, for their bones. Um, currently, I must say, there is a, there, the Minister Creasy did put a, um, a halt to the export of, of lion bones and that's due to the court case that the NSPCA had against the Minister back then. But um, yeah, the, these lines, I mean, you can just imagine, you, you go near your fireplace and feel how hot that is. Mm -hmm. You can just imagine these lines stuck in those, those enclosures, can't, no escape. There, there's nothing for them to do, just, just lie there and burn. It's, it really is a, a, a harrowing experience to, to, to consider that they were going through. Now, if you speak about the minister putting a halt to the export of these bones, uh, what is the, the impact of that? Because it does mean that these people who have started this so-called business, uh, they don't have any money coming in. So therefore, they have no use for these animals. They don't, they don't have the money to look after them, and they couldn't care less by the, by the looks of this specific case. What, what, what is the impact then uh, of, of, of this industry being put on hold because of this court case? So, so the court case was, was actually the, the NSPCA's challenge because there's no welfare um, consideration Mm. In determining the export quota for lion bones. So obviously the, the minister's decision that we're applauding was after the high level panel's recommendations and which we fully support and that is the immediate closure of the industry. The, the welfare implications are immense. Um, mm. My team, we, we obviously work across the country and we've, we've just seen a, a massive increase in welfare concerns all across at every every just about every captive uh, lion facility, and um, you know with the, with the restriction on on cash flow, you know the, the, this whole thing needs to come to a head soon. It mm. needs to follow the processes, the public participation, and the final decision made because the, the the impact is actually on the animals more than anything else, and that's where that's where we've got to make things right. Now, we, I know with these kinds of things, if you're waiting for a decision to be made by government, there's normally a lot of red tape, a lot of paperwork that needs to be done. But time is of the essence if you just look at this, the state of these animals in, in Bloemfontein. And that's outside of uh, the, the wildfires that obviously took their toll on these poor animals as well. Uh, what processes can be followed right now as we wait for that final decision for this industry to be closed down? Because what kind of numbers are we talking about here? Well, Marcel, there's, there's thousands of lions in captivity, and mm. uh, our idea going forward, the only way you can monitor it is to actually get out there on the ground, you know, boots on the ground, to coin a phrase, um, and to work 
jointly with, with nature conservation authorities and ensure that the welfare standards are kept in check and um, that there's an attention where animals need to be euthanized, they need to be euthanized. Uh, we, we can't allow animals to suffer mm. for a financial gain that might or may not come. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's our responsibility and the owners of these animals to make sure that these animals are looked after. No matter whether they're deriving an income from it or not, it's, it's not the animal's fault. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's to increase the intensity of inspections, the regularity of inspections, mm. and, and better cooperation between nature conservation entities and the NSPCA. So the humane treatment of these animals obviously is key, and if they do need to be euthanized, that to be done in a proper way. But obviously also if there are animals that are um, still okay, as it were, what, what could happen, what can, can be done for those lions that are found in captivity uh, a, a, and part of a business that is on the brink of being closed out? Well, my thought, it's a very good question and probably a little bit contentious as well because mm. at the end of the day, it, it, no matter what happens, it's the owner's responsibility. If the owners do not want those animals, they need to make contact with us and, and we'll see what way forward we can arrange th with nature conservation as well. Mm. Um, unfortunately, this beast has just been allowed to grow and, and it's mm. been allowed to grow from, from the department. It, it, it was something that the NSPCA has always been opposed to because of the, the massive welfare concerns that we've seen. But we can't run away. We can't tuck our tails between our legs and run. We've got to face it head on. And, you know, collaboratively would be the best option, which I believe we're getting there. We've, we've had some really good cooperation from the relevant um, role players. And I think, I think that a, a future working relationship can only grow. Okay, we're going to leave it there. A very important discussion, very important story that we need to keep an eye on there. Thank you so much for your time and for the work that you and your team and your colleagues in Bloemfontein um, and across the country continue to do. Douglas Walleter is the manager. He is the senior inspector and manager of the NSPCA Wildlife Protection Unit. Thousands of lions in peril from what he's told us there.